So thank you so much for the introduction. So I'm Hannah Rogers, I'm one of the research directors at Blue Yonder Research. And the plan for my 15 minutes is to talk to you about how we tell stories at Blue Yonder um, and how basically we've progressed to storyboarding, um, our edits, our presentations, our documents. And for us, it's all about adding value to every project. And it's, it's about generating that absolute buy-in from stakeholders, whether that's your clients, that's their clients, that grocers. So however far up the stakeholder chain you need to get, this is what we want to do with storytelling. Um, and just wanted to thank you for the, taking the time to listen as well. So obviously, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them at the end. So for us, it is about great research deserving outstanding storytelling. And, and how we feel about this is that everyone loves a story, absolutely everyone. The, the part and parcel of everyday life, and from a really early age, you know, bedtime stories, news stories, amazing films, and pretty much everything that you remember in life is because someone told you a story, you were telling a story, or you were part of that story. And, and that was the premise for how we, we changed the game with, with our reports um, and, and with our edits. And it is, you know, imagine you're going out for, for coffee with your friends and, you know, they really hook you in. They tell you a dramatic story and it's a story, something that grabs your attention, that, that really helps you feel the emotion. And then, really importantly, it's got to bring you to that conclusion. So it's connective. And, you know, with research and in stories in our own lives, you need something that's immersive. You know, thinking about watching a film, you've really got to get hooked into it because that's the bit that makes you act. That's a bit that makes you tell your friends, oh, guess what I saw, guess what I heard. And it, you need to be able to long for that answer, what happens next. And the important bit is to say, when you get that what happened next, with a really good story, it's resonating. It's making you act on it. And obviously applying this to market research, it's the acting on it that matters. It, it's so powerful for our clients and because no one effectively wants their report you spent, you, know, you spent so much time on it, it's absolutely laden with insight. It's not just superficial learning. This is really good stuff. It's game changing stuff. You don't want that to be swallowed up on the main server and forgotten. You want that to be in the open, talked about. You want your stakeholders to act on it and do something to accelerate their journey. And um, basically, we need to tell them research stories that they remember and that act as a call to action. Um, and ultimately, that's going to drive their growth because it accelerates their brand and their product. So I think it's, it's important to say, what do we mean by outstanding storytelling? Because I feel when I've talked to a few people about storytelling, the, the word storytelling, the, the the term, it implies fiction. And I think that can be quite dangerous because, you know, in market research, we pride ourselves on being, you know, the voice of the consumer. It's fact, it's reality. Um, it isn't fiction. It's simply making the story all happy and shiny to impress the clients. That's not what it is about. It's about telling clients what they, they need to hear, um, which isn't always what they, they want to hear, but it's about bringing it to life, making your point, making it compelling and meeting this need that people have to to listen to to understand you know all our clients themselves have stakeholders even at the highest level they will have stakeholders and their need is to get the stakeholder above them to listen to buy in to believe them and to act on the information they present and we know the term bringing people close to the consumer it can be very much overused you know ethnography we use it all the time focus groups it is all about getting the consumer close to your clients but with the storytelling element, I think it, it does really bring them closest because it's in their own words. It's fully immersive. It's getting the emotion in there. And I think the important thing for me is that stories can be good or bad news. And the key bit is that they're compelling, they capture the engagement and they're energising and people want to act on them. And I will say as well, I think you've probably all experienced this if you're research practitioners, it, you know, or even if you're clients looking to, to upsell the news in the business, it can be particularly powerful storytelling when there is bad news. Because um, often, you know, there are things that come up that are unexpected and that's, that's great, that's an insight, that's something that's challenged them, game changed. 
but it could be something quite negative, which means they have to act, they have to change. And if you present your client or your stakeholder with something that is a story, you know, this isn't this isn't us as an agency, this is this is what you consumers want, they get fully on board with it because they've seen the full journey, they've seen the the why, the what, the so what, all those elements spelt out through the consumer narrative. It's direct access and it is incredibly powerful. And for us, it's about storytelling is a new approach for a new era of insight. So as, as practitioners, we have to, to change. Um, and so the benefit really is, you know, this absolute stakeholder buy-in. It's accelerating journey from vendor to partner. So obviously the first time you work with a client, you, your vendor, they're, they're trying you out, they're testing you. You may maybe have a problem with another supplier, but, you know, they ultimately they've come to you because they want you to deliver. So by sharing a story with them, obviously you're, you're heightening your expertise, you're showing your quality, you're showing how close you can get to consumers. And what we find is it, it helps as it pushes us through that process that they love it, they come back time and time again. And it helps them take you to that partnership level, which is what we always strive to, to achieve. It's that relationship with your clients. So you're all involved in the story together. We also find that it bonds teams with each other as well. So this is obviously the research teams, but the client teams and working collaboratively, collab I can say that collaboratively, um, because they tend to commit to getting more out of everything. And it's something that we've seen. They get excited. You know, when the clients come back to us for the next project, we go, oh my God, I want to see output like that. Tell me the story again. That went down so well. So they begin to get excited about the, the videos that we show. It re-energizes, it re-energizes, it excites and crucially it lands the insight message far better um, and we know that because it's people reach the conclusions faster and they think more about the implications because it's how it's presented to them one of our clients said if we start telling stories early on the early on in the iterative process we get to the end quicker and this is what he was talking about he's saying my stakeholders listened quicker we got to the point quicker because we had the whole story encapsulated it wasn't just about well you know this is a background this is the objectives and this is the key insights it was beautifully put together they got engaged they got on board and they got on board quicker so projects that can take months they when you tell a really good story and get people fired up and get people really understand Understanding, then it shortens the time frames massively. Um, and the question is obviously, how do we tell a great story? And the answer to that for us is digitally. Though I have put some hints and tips in um, in, the, in a second to talk you through what we can do with standard and um, PowerPoints and, and Qual and Quant as well, because the future really is digital and it is a new buzzword. And so often digital, it means cheaper, faster, poorer quality and learning, not insight. But this is completely the opposite. Digital storing is different. It's about being clear, concise, compelling and the highest possible quality footage turned into the highest possible quality output and when you get it right this is the output this is a two minutes of story that finds itself on the phones of your, your VPs of your, your brand directors they're carrying it around with them because they're so impressed with it and it's about bringing footage into a quick story you know you might have from groups um, you might have you know six hours of footage from in-home ethnography god that can be you know 20 hours of footage from shopper research again 48 hours of footage you need to bring that into a two minute story and it's new practical things the starting point is you need to get filming so it's you know get the best quality cameras you can afford get 4k get hd if you're doing ethnography even if it's video footage filmed on a phone get people to use the highest resolution in home video footage use the phones get that information because that is how we're going to get the, the story told and you know obviously don't just get the back of the moderator's head in the, the focus group but, you know keep as much um think keep about as much footage in there as possible get everything recorded um, and so the storyboarding element of this, I think it's time to talk about this. And you have to make sure that um, the story reaches its potential. And how we do that is we basically reverse engineer it, we storyboard. So the, the challenge we always face is, well, how do you know what's coming up? It's research. You know, you can't predict what's going to happen. And yes, you know, we've all been in the industry quite a while, so we can predict roughly how we think consumers will react. What we don't know is exactly what they're going to say. Um, how they're going to behave and that's that we fill in that's the last bit 
But the first question we always started is, is with is, what do your client stakeholders need to see to get them on board? So this is not just your client. What does the VP, what does the grocer, what does the buyer need to see to get them on board? So think right to the end. You know, and if you think right to the end, obviously that's going to help you define your methodology as well. So you've got your objectives, you know that. But there's no point doing quant if you know this, this buyer will only look at in-home video diaries, for example. There's no point doing video diaries if he will only look at, at numbers or he or she will only look at numbers. So it helps you define the methodology. You know, it makes you optimise your audiovisual setup as well. So think about what they need to see. They need, if it's a product, they need to see it in hand. They need to see that first taste moment. Storyboard that. Get out the A3 paper, piece of paper and draw it what could that look like yes you don't know exactly what they're going to do but it's a placeholder in the story right we need to bring them on this journey it helps you set specific tasks as well so if you know what your stakeholder needs to see it helps you define the projectives that you use the in-home um in-home tools that you use you get your consumers to go on a scavenger hunt that is very powerful if we can see consumers rushing around trying to find words images objects which sums up what they're feeling or what they're using or the, the sensory experience of something and it also helps you set your location so if you're thinking right to the end if you're storyboarding right to the end where does this need to be will they only listen if they actually see it in an action in home or can this be done in a focus group can this be, be done round a table so that will help you and then storyboard the content as well so ask the questions you know what theme what style and give some give some examples as well you know is this highly dramatic is it technical is it crisp is it clear you know, is the music, all these things, get to know your stakeholders, what they want. Um, make sure you know your key touch point shots as well, because it's, consumers might do all sorts of things. But if they're not pivotal, if they're not the behavior that we need to see, they don't go in. So when you've got the objectives, if your objectives is how easy is this to use, you know you need to, to storyboard and create these space gaps for um, them using the pack the first time, the second time, the third time, when it's near empty, any struggles, any um, unexpected um, ergonomics or intuitiveness, and also use it to use the flow of the insights. And basically use consumers to fill in the blanks. So write it all out on A3. This is what it should look. This is the vision. And use consumers to fill the blanks with fresh insight and with language and their behavior. Um, and it is absolutely about creating impact. And you think about documentaries that have really stood out to you um, and their editing style, L cuts, J cuts with the audio, B roll where different angles and shots are used and force the attention onto the screen, use picture in picture, video overlay, consumer voiceovers, annotations, animations. You storyboard these in advance and plan them so that, um, that the edits after the understanding is there, get these little shots in as well so you know how to make it like a documentary um, and it works without sound as well because that's something that we've been asked to do more and more you think when you're scrolling through Facebook if you could a really good video is something that you understand without you know lying in bed turning the sound on and waking your husband up um, so if you can actually see that if you can understand it without audio well that's even better um, and just a couple more slides now because it is challenging. I think one of the questions previously was, what if I can't afford the cameras? You know, what it is, it can be quite expensive. But, you know, you can use this technique with PowerPoints as well. They're not just referral documents. Um, it is um, a story in its own right. So, you know, if stakeholders read only the titles, look only at the pictures, let them, if they just flick through, they will understand the story. It needs chapters. So think about what we're calling scene blocking. It's how your objectives, territories flow into the next. But each page was captivated and engaged beautifully as well. So it's that what, what is the point the consumers are making? Why? Why are they making that? And so what? You know, you need to create these micro stories of the client win. What is the benefit to them? And obviously the, the challenge to this is obviously that, what about quant? It's really natural to tell a qual story. You've got story, you've got people, you've got engagement, but that the quant really has to be brought to life as well. This is about 
digitizing your data it's animating your graphs using verbatim overlay and it's a seamless integration of stats images animations videos and this not only creates a deck that's beyond challenge it's data driven it's a compelling story and you know the way to do this is use the same principles what are the key questions asked and although you won't have the answer until the data is actually in you can start playing the story of the quant report what questions do you think warrant animations videos images and you know you can actually there's programs now that we use to create animated graphs it just brings it to life it makes it more engaging and it gives you this head start and finishing off um what happens when an insight agency tells a story it is absolutely outstanding it's captivating insightful natural and it's straight from the consumers um, and it's absolutely certain to drive the stakeholder buy-in and actually last year we were challenged to create um, testimonial demos ready for tv and you know we'd we got a great reputation for storytelling reports but it was like take it a notch up what can you do push yourselves what can you do and basically they wanted a tvc in advert making and it really had to get to the heart of the consumer experience and deliver a powerful for reason to purchase um, and the approach we took was that the combination obviously research expertise the highest quality moderation and um, all the logistics in place but crucially it was a storyboarding that had been the game changer um, so not only did we we have to think about the what came out we had to really think about how it looked what are all these documentary techniques that we can use to bring this to life as well as obviously the the 4k um big camera filming um but then obviously we did this we've done it time after time again now it's it's absolutely outstanding but the techniques that we use to make these tvcs we're now filtering through into everything we do whether that's you know three focus groups whether that's some in-home eth ethnography whether that's an in-home usage test and a quant report we use the same techniques we plan ahead you know in an ideal world what's what's going to happen what's it going to look like what do we need to get stakeholder buy-in and then when we get the results we use that to fill the gaps but we have to make it beautiful cool and um thank you for your time hopefully i haven't waffled on too much um and i think we'll go to the question section thank you very much hannah um we are a little tight on the time but we've got some questions so let's make sure we take them um mm -hmm. the first one here is in twitter so in your opinion is there a plot storyline that drives actions more than others is there a plot storyline i think it would tend to be it's a really good question actually it would tend to be presenting the challenge first what is the challenge? So if you always go with a, this is a consumer, it's almost the bad news first. You know, this is a consumer frustrations, this is the issue, um, because it gets them involved, it gets them to sit up and listen and go, oh my God, we need to change, we need to do something, it's the call to action. And then I think it's a case of taking them through that in detail. So big picture issue, taking them through the issues in detail, and then the positives, the so what, this is what we do, this is what we recommend, and um, but all in consumer's own words. So I think it tends to be, bad news first but finish on a real and this is what you do to, to make it better does that help it does it does okay we have another question here um, my challenge is that I work in a b2b organization mm -hmm. and so when I'm researching with end clients they're in a business environment usually short of time and are talking to me as a favor with no incentives I often do tele depths mm -hmm. which in themselves are not visual how do you suggest we bring some of this less interesting elements to life so um you could ask if you can record the um i mean i think you probably will record them already but if not you could do some animated text on there so you could still create it as as a video but maybe do it with a series of images with words that that pop up um to to really talk you through it um and if they're talking about a particular image or something or ask them for some images as well if they have time but if not i think just the words popping up in powerful orders with images that you feel relevant could to really bring it to life super thank you so much hannah um and a really good tip there at the end 